Well, today we're going to continue on in our David, uh, not David, Daniel series, sorry, um, our Daniel series. And Pastor Steve started last week in chapter one. He talked about how Daniel was taken from his homeland and he was taken into Babylonian captivity and they wanted to, him to conform to their culture. They wanted to indoctrinate him. They wanted him to assimilate him into their culture. But Daniel instead chose to honor God and therefore God honored him. And so today we're going to move on in to chapter two and we're going to continue in this series and, and, and we're going to see a few different things. And today we're going to talk about position and alignment, positioned and aligned. And see, what we're going to see is as we move into uh, chapter two, we, we begin to think, man, Daniel... Daniel's not really in a good position, really. Like if you were looking at everything that's going on and you're really taking it in and thinking about it, Daniel is away from his home. He's basically been kidnapped. He's a teenager. He's been taken away from his family, everything that he knows, and he's stuck in Babylon. So really it's like, man, wow, God, this is not that great. And so his position is not that great. Um, and so sometimes... In life, how many of you have ever been to a chiropractor in here? Maybe, um, have you ever, like, you've been out of line, maybe you were in a car wreck, maybe you sleep wrong, your position is bad, and then all of a sudden your spine um, gets out of alignment. Um, a couple years ago, I, when I was racing and I was running all the time, I ended up hurting my back. Um, at least I think it was from that, because really all I did was bend over, and when I got back up, I was like, oh, that doesn't feel so good. And then I went a couple of more minutes. I was like, oh, that really doesn't feel good. And then after about 30 minutes, I was like frozen, stuck like this. I couldn't breathe. And I was walking around like this. And I was trembling because I couldn't move. I, was, I hurt so bad. And I, um, I actually look, had to have some friends come and they basically had to carry me um, to the chiropractor, Dr. Arnold, who actually goes to church here. They basically had to carry me into his place so that he could work on me and, and loosen me back up and get my, my spine um, back in alignment. And so I was talking, before this message, I was talking to Dr. Arnold. I was asking him some questions. I was asking how our position really affects our alignment. Like if we had poor posture, if we hunch over, then it's going to affect the way our spine is shaped. And if we, uh, um, if you, you know, carry some tension in your shoulder and you end up holding one shoulder higher than the other, then eventually those muscles are going to get tighter and they're going to pull your spine out of alignment. If you sleep in a certain way that's wrong and you get your neck all like this the entire night, you're going to wake up and your neck is still going to be like this. Um, you can be out of alignment. And the thing is, is when you're out of alignment, it can really play havoc with your body. Um, because basically you have your brain that sits on top of the spine and then all your nerves run down through the spine and out into the rest of the body. And if they're pinched or they're wrong, they can cause numbness, they can cause a weakness in your muscles, you won't be able to perform at your highest ability. Um, it can even cause organ dysfunction and you would never even know it. Your organs wouldn't be functioning the way they need to be. You would feel fatigue. It just wouldn't, be, it would be pain. You wouldn't be loss of mobility. So when you're out of alignment, it causes all kinds of issues. And so as we continue through today, I want you to keep in mind position and alignment. Position and alignment. If you're taking notes, you write down position and alignment. Um, keep that at the forefront of your mind because what we're gonna see is while we look at Daniel, it, it, it seems that he's in a very bad position. As a matter of fact, when you get into chapter two, it gets amazingly worse. His position gets amazingly worse. So let's begin in Daniel chapter two, verses one through 13. And this is what it says. He's, he's, he's been with Nebuchadnezzar since the first chapter. It's been about a year. And here's what it says. In the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His spirit was troubled and his sleep left him. Then the king commanded that the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans be summoned to tell the king his dreams. So they came in and stood before the king, and the king said to them, I had a dream, and my spirit is troubled to know the dream. Then the Chaldeans said to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. And the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, the word from me is firm. If you do not make known to me the dream and its interpretation, you shall be torn limb from limb and your houses shall be laid in ruins. But 
If you show me the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and its interpretation. They answered a second time and said, let the king tell his servants the dream and we will show you its interpretation. The king answered and said again, I know with certainty that you are trying to gain time. Because you see the word from me is firm, if you do not make the dream known to me, there is but one sentence for you. You have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till the times change. Therefore, tell me the dream and I shall know that you can show me its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered the king and said, there is not a man on earth who can meet the king's demands for no great and powerful king has asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or Chaldean. The thing that the king asks is difficult and no one can show it to the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Now, so here's what's happened. The king, Nebuchadnezzar, he's had a dream. It has really messed with him. It's made him to where he can't go back to sleep. He is bothered by this dream. So he brings in all his so-called wise men and they come in and he, he says, okay, hey, I had a dream. I need you to tell me the dream and interpret it to me. They're like, well, hey, no, if you tell us the dream, then we'll give you the interpretation. It'll be easy. He's like, ha, 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 no. If you can't tell me the dream, then you're basically, you're full of crap. So here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 You're full of it. And so um, he, he's like, no, we're gonna, we're gonna. <laughs> That's funny to me. Um, so he said, you're full of it. You need to tell me the dream and then I'll believe the interpretation because that's how I know, I'll know it's real. And I'm like, that's crazy. Nobody has asked for that. And so the king gets very angry. And so because of this, the king was angry and very furious and commanded that all the wise men of Babylon be destroyed. So the decree went out and the wise men were about to be killed and they sought Daniel and his companions to kill them. So now Daniel's in a worse position than he's been now. Through no, no fault of his own, his life is in jeopardy. Now, here's the thing we have to understand. Like, we're all in a position, but here's the thing that's particular. Daniel was positioned by God. Where he is, what is going on, he was positioned there by God. Now, here's what I want you to keep in mind is a lot of times in life, you and I, we don't like the position we are in. We have put our focus into the position and we are upset about the position and we wish we were in a different position because maybe the position makes us feel uncomfortable. Maybe it's relationships. Maybe it's a place we work. Maybe it's all kinds of things. Maybe it's just the circumstances that we're in. We're upset about the position that we are in. We put most of our time and energy trying to change our position. But the problem is that's the wrong spot. Because you see, God positioned Daniel under Nebuchadnezzar with a purpose. And Daniel has a choice. He can either be upset and bitter about this position, which is the same for you and I. You and I are in a position right now and we can either be upset and bitter about it or we can make the choice. And that choice is either is to align ourselves with God. We can be upset and bitter or align ourselves with God. See, Daniel, Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego, they aligned themselves with God. And here's what you know, that a lot of people, a lot of God's people were in this same position, right? Because we talked about this last week, that they weren't the only four Hebrew children to be taken into captivity, but they were the only four to align themselves with God. And so they're in a position, they are positioned there by God, but the choice they made was to align themselves with God. See, in America, I think a lot of times, oftentimes, we think to ourselves that the position God's going to put us in is a position of affluence and prosperity. And we think, why would God ever put us in an uncomfortable position? Why would God ever put us in a place that is uncomfortable, that is not fun? I mean, doesn't God know everything in my life is supposed to be fun? Like, why would I want to do it? See, that's the thing. Like, we, we talk about this in America a lot. Don't do it unless you enjoy it. But what if God is positioning you for greatness? Amen. See, what if God is positioning you for greatness? 
See, God is positioning you for whatever will bring him glory. We may think to ourselves, God, why would you put me in this position? But God is positioning you and your unique gifts for his purpose. See, yeah. Because here's the thing about Daniel. It's not, he's not there by happenstance. It's not random. Here's how you know. Daniel chapter one, verse 17, it talks about um, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he's like, as for these four youths, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And listen to this. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. So do you understand what's happened here? It's, it's, it's like, do you see... Daniel's taken into captivity. He ends up going, and the king of where he's taken into captivity has a dream. What's Daniel's special skill? Interpreting dreams. Now, the position is uncomfortable. The position is not a good position. And sometimes when you're in an uncomfortable position, you're tempted, to t you're tempted and tested to take yourself out of alignment. Right? I mean, have you ever hurt yourself? And if you hurt yourself, you want to move to whatever position is most comfortable because you don't want to keep hurting. When I hurt my back, I wanted to stay just like this. The problem was I can't stay like that forever. I can't function that way. I'd be out of alignment. So when I went to see Dr. Arnold, he tells me like, hey, when, when you, your body's going to tell you to get back in the comfortable position. You can't conform. Instead, you have to stay in alignment. He was even telling me, don't bend over again, because if you hurt when you bend over, your body will tell you, nope, don't do that. Stay away from that, because it hurts. And then your brain will re rewire, and your body will begin to change and adapt so that it avoids doing that. And see, if you get out of alignment, you might get in a position God never intended you to be in. If you get in alignment, you might be in a position where God intended you for greatness, but you now moved into a position God never meant for you to be in because it was comfortable, because it kept me away from pain. You see, we're all, we all want to go in the way where there is no pain, where it's not uncomfortable. But God had a purpose. God had a plan. So the choice is, can I stay aligned with God? Will I align myself when I get in alignment with God? And so we go on. So if you keep going on, now you're into verse 14. This is uh, um, Daniel um, has come. They know he's out to kill him, so Arioch comes. And so then Daniel replied with prudence and discretion to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. He declared to Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree of the king so urgent? Then Arioch made the matter known to Daniel, and Daniel went in and requested the king to appoint him a time that he might show the interpretation to the king. Then Daniel went in, went to his house, and made the matter known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and told them to seek mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery, so that Daniel and his companions might not be destroyed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision of the night. Then Daniel blessed God of heaven. See, what did Daniel immediately do? He went and sought God in prayer. He aligned himself with God. You see, he was in a position. It's not comfortable. It's, gotten, it's getting worse. He's going to die, but the place he runs to is God. And what does God do? God immediately uses his gift. See, so many of us are looking to find our gifts and running to find our calling. And here's the thing. If you're in alignment, then you won't have to search for your calling. You won't have to search for your gift. When you're in alignment, your calling will find you. When you're in alignment, your gift will find you. See, we spend so much of our time in life, what is going to, what can I find? What's going to make me happy? And we're looking for the position that makes us happy that we can use our calling. The problem is, is that God is positioning you. And it's up to you to decide, will I align myself with where he's positioning me? You see, if, if, if you're not in alignment, you will miss your assignment. 
Do you, you, you get it? If you're not in alignment, you will miss your assignment. If Daniel had not been in alignment, none of this would happen. He wouldn't have been able to save himself. He wouldn't have been able to save all of the wise men that he ends up saving, whether they deserve it or not. See, are you chasing God or are you chasing your calling? See, are you chasing God or are you chasing your calling? Are you trying to be a vessel that's used by God or are you trying to be God? See, that is the question. Because when you're chasing your calling, when you're trying to do it on your own gifts, when you're trying to do it on your own power, you are being God or trying to be God. See, Daniel knew. He, did, he knew he had to turn his dependence completely on God. So what did he do? He sought God in prayer. He aligned himself with God. Are you letting God make it happen? Or are you trying to make it happen all on your own? See, we spend so much of our life, like <laughs> we go to jobs and we are trying to attain a position at our job. We go to jobs and, and we look for careers and we go through life trying to attain position and use our calling and our gifts. And so many times we miss, the, we miss the fact that we are misaligned and we are a bunch of people walking around like this. Because spiritually we're not aligned with God and we end up being spiritually dysfunctional. The church, so many people in church are walking around looking for how to use their gifts and their calling. And not many people are walking around trying to align themselves with God. And so today, we have to align ourselves with God. Sometimes you let your position discourage you too. See, sometimes we think that because of our position, that it's actually, it actually holds us back. See, Daniel wasn't even in the meeting. Like, you understand, he wasn't anybody important right now. He's just one of the people they brought over from Judah, from Israel. And so his position, he, yet he goes and he asks for a meeting with the king. It's because he knew who he was in Christ. He knew who he was in God, right? He was aligned with God, completely dependent on God. So we go on. So Daniel chapter two, verses 25, we skipped a part. He thanks God. He prays, he thanks God. I, I encourage you, listen, you need to go home and you need to read Daniel chapter two. As we continue to go through this whole book and study, read the whole chapter of Daniel, or the whole book of Daniel, not chapter. Read the whole book of Daniel. I promise you, it'll change your life. You'll get more out of what you hear here in church. So here's what happens. Then Ariok brought Daniel before the king in haste and said thus to him, I have found among the exiles from Judah a man who will make known to the king the interpretation. The king declared to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, are you able to make known to me the dream that I have seen and its interpretation? Daniel answered the king and said, no wise men, enchanters, magicians, or astrologers can show the king the mystery that the king has asked. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. See, what do we see here first? Daniel didn't take credit for it. Daniel didn't say, look at what I can do. He said, there is God and look at what God can do. He aligned himself with God's will, not his will. So let's, let's, let's keep going on. Your dream and the visions of your head as you lay in bed are these. To you, O king, as you lay in bed came thoughts of what would be after this, and he who reveals mysteries made known to you what is to be. So here's what he's saying. He, God, has given you this dream. That's what he's telling Nebuchadnezzar. God has given you this dream. But as for me, this mystery has been revealed to me, not because of any wisdom that I have more than all the living, but in order that the interpretation may be made known to the king and that you may, be, may know the thoughts of your mind. So here's something important. I'm gonna paraphrase the whole, like what the interpretation of the dream is and what it means. But what you need to understand is that God gave Nebuchadnezzar this dream. God is setting up the events of history because this dream is what happens in history. 
God positioned Daniel. Do you understand that? This you have to be clear. This was all not chance. This is God's plan. And it's because he aligned himself with God that he's being used. You are not in your life by happenstance. There is a plan. God has a plan. He is positioning you for greatness. The question is, will you align yourself with God? So here's, here's what happens. He, he says to him, King, you had a dream. And in that dream, you saw a big statue. At the top of that statue was a gold head. That gold head represents you and your kingdom. Now, next came a silver section of the statue. That represents the kingdom that's coming at you, after you. It's inferior. It's not quite as good as you. And, and that was the, the Persian Empire. Then the next section of the statue was bronze. And come, that represents the Greek Empire. And then the next... Part of that statue was made of iron, and then the feet were made of iron and clay. And that, st that part of the statue represents the Roman Empire. Now, we know those things today because we've watched history play out. And what happens next is you saw a stone cut by no human hand. It was thrown. It came, destroyed the feet of that statue where the iron and clay were, and then the whole statue crumbled and tore to pieces. And that stone turned into a mountain and it became the kingdom that lasts forever. That is Christ and that is God's kingdom. So God is setting up the future. He is working his plan all the way to bringing Jesus to us through all of these events. See, God is behind the scenes. Nothing is accidental with God. Do you understand that? That's why he says, I will work all things for the good of those who were called according to my purpose. His purpose. Who were called according to his purpose. I will work all things for the good of those. So again, the question is, you are positioned for greatness, but will you align yourself with God? And so this is what happens at the end of that. This is what happens. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and paid homage to Daniel and commanded that an offering and incense be offered to him. The king answered and said to Daniel, truly your God is God of gods and Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries for you have been able to reveal this mystery. Then the king gave Daniel high honors and many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and the chief prefects over all the wise men of Babylon. Daniel made a request of the king and he appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel remained at the king's court. Do you see what God has done here? He, he, he's taken Daniel who was in a horrible position, but Daniel aligned himself with God and now Daniel is in an amazing position. See, if you're not in alignment, you will miss your assignment. That is the key. So how do we align ourselves with God? Well, we have to put him in his proper place. It's not my will. It's God's will. See, God is the God of gods, what you just heard, the God of gods, the Lord of lords, the King of kings. And you have to understand that he has to be in that place in your life, that it can't be your will. You can't be chasing your calling and your gifts and your own success. You must chase the will of God. You must align yourself with the will of God. Jesus had to align himself with God as well. Jesus was positioned. He was positioned to be the savior of the world, but he still had to align himself with God's will. If you turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 14, verses 35 through 36, this is when Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane. He is he's in much anguish and turmoil to the point he is sweating blood. And this is what he says. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me. What is he asking? He's asking for God. Say, God, if it's possible, I don't want to go and die on the cross. If it's possible, I don't want to have to deal with the unimaginable, horrific torture that is going to come my way. Because I know it's going to be bad. If it's possible, I know all things are possible with you, God. 
But then what does he finish the prayer with? He says this, yet not what I will, but what you will. You see, Jesus was positioned and aligned. See, he still, Jesus had to choose to go and die. I mean, he willingly went to the cross. He wasn't forced to. He didn't have to. He chose to go through all of that for you and I. Why? Because he had to align himself with the will of God. He chose to align himself with the will of God. And you understand, he was fully man, right? And so his flesh, his flesh is saying, go, we do not want to go through that. Even to the point he was, he thought he was so upset, he thought he was going to die. He says in Matthew 26, 38, then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And you know what? The disciples couldn't even keep watch with him. They fall asleep. So imagine how alone he feels. Yet what does he do? He chooses God's will over his own will every time. See, God, nothing you're going through is by accident today. You are positioned with a purpose. Wherever you're at, you are positioned with a purpose. Whoever you are, whatever you do, you are positioned with a purpose. And see, sometimes we get in a position and it's uncomfortable. And so we decide to change, to conform a little, to be comfortable. And so if there's something that wants to push, if I got a little pain over here and that means I'm going to favor this shoulder, then we favor that shoulder and we get comfortable. And it begins to pull us out of alignment and this happens in your life. If you conform, if you are in a situation and, and you make a little compromise, it can pull you out of alignment. But you have to be, but, but just like a chiropractor can adjust you back into line, God has set it up so that you can be adjusted too. He will bring conviction to you through the Holy Spirit, through his word. And so when you read this word and you get convicted and you say, man, I ought to change this. The word of God's making me a little uncomfortable. That's because it wants to adjust you into alignment with God. See, this book is alive and powerful and it will pierce to the very heart of you. It will pierce to the marrow of your bones and it will transform you if you will let it. This is not... It's not, it's not a, a master that beats you into submission. You have to choose to align yourself with it. So again, you are positioned by God for greatness. And see, sometimes I think we, we as people, we get Christians, sometimes the church is the world's biggest panicker. Right? We think, oh, what happens if, if so-and-so wins the election? Oh, we're all in trouble. No, your position for greatness. Nebuchadnezzar didn't have anything to do with God. He wasn't part of God, but, but just, just so you know, every leader that has done whatever, they are part of God's plan. God is bigger than whatever leader there is. And so what happens is we still have to align ourselves with God. And if you align yourselves with God, you will always be doing whatever it is that he wants you to do. It doesn't matter who's president. It doesn't matter what happens wherever you align yourself with God. And you will always find your assignment. Your gifting and calling will always find you if you align yourself with God. The only reason to panic is if you're not aligned with God. The only reason to be upset or in fear is because you're not aligned with God. That's why you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. That's why you have to listen and let God adjust you back into alignment. Because God wants you to be in alignment. He wants great things for you because he has a purpose. He has a plan for you. But we have to allow ourselves to be aligned with him. We have to allow ourselves to be aligned with him. We don't try to do it our way. We don't try to make things happen for ourselves. We don't go out and say, look at what I can do. Look at my gifts. Ah, look at what I can do. If you watch Mad TV, Stewie, look at what I can do. Ah. It was awesome. Go look it up on YouTube if you can. Um, anyway. I was like going to segue into altar call, and now I'm off somewhere else. Anyway. 
You don't go and say, look at what I can do. God is positioning you. You align yourself with him. That's what Daniel did. When you, when you read the rest of this book, you will see over and over these horrible positions that Daniel was put in, and he never compromised. He never conformed to the position. Instead, he always continually aligned himself with God every time. And Daniel, and that's what I'm saying about your, your, your position, whatever you are. Daniel was, was a teenager, a young kid. I mean, he grew up in, the, I mean, he was all alone. It was a horrible position. But God positioned him with a purpose. And you are too. So listen, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want you to think about this today. If you're here and you, and you say, I'm not in alignment with God, Craig. I have not made Jesus Lord of my life. But you're sitting here and maybe you felt a little bit of conviction. Maybe right now you're starting to feel a little bit of conviction, a little bit of something that says, I need to change. I need to make a change in my life. I need to align myself back with God. That's the Holy Spirit. He wants to give you an adjustment. Now, don't ignore it. This is your opportunity. God is going to position you for greatness. You have to align yourself with him. God will position you to bring glory to him. And there's no better call in life than that. And so right now, I want to ask you, I don't want to call you out. I don't want to embarrass you, but, but I do want you to make a decision today because I believe if you'll make this decision, then you can leave here and you can live a life in alignment with God. So the Bible says, if you acknowledge me before men, then, I'll acknowledge, then Jesus will acknowledge you before his Father. And so right now, we want to, we want to take a moment for you to say, I acknowledge Jesus and I want to align my life with him. So if you're here and you, and, you, and, you, and you have never made Jesus Lord of your life, or you're here and you've made Jesus Lord of your life at one time, but now you're out of alignment and you have walked away. If that's you, I want to ask you to do something. And I know if one will do it, the rest of you, whoever else needs to do it, will do it. So I want to ask you right now in this moment, if you need Jesus and you need to realign yourself, would you stand up right now if there's anybody in here who needs to realign themselves with Jesus? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. In the top. Is there anybody else? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I mean, look across the bottom one last time. Thank you very much. Don't sit there. If you are feeling any type of conviction, that is the Holy Spirit right now trying to give you an adjustment. So as I look across the bottom one last time, thank you very much. Is there anybody else? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. As I look across the top, is there anybody left up there right now? One last time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, for those of you who are standing, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. For those of you who are seated, I want you to repeat this prayer in support of those who are standing. Would you say, Father, I come to you now and I align my life with you. It's not my will, but it's your will. I surrender all that I am to you. I thank you. You sent your son, Jesus Christ to die for me. And so, I will live my life for the rest of my days for you. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Give you the added edge is the wisdom of God. God shows you how, how to reinvent it. God shows you who to sell it. God shows you who to meet with. God gives you a creative idea. And we need wisdom, especially in our marriages that are struggling I've said for, I'm sorry, a hundred times, I brought you roses up.